Okay, so let's do our public and private key lab here. So you should find the lab is there. So we'll just open it up and have a little look. Okay, so we're going to do some little mathematics first, uh, just to sort of prove the uh, the Diffie-Hellman method. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, make a quick start on this one. So uh, we have so Bob would calculate two eight seven nine and raised to the power of x, that's the value that he's selected with random value and then we do mod of 9929 and that's the value that we get for Bob, so we'll just make a note of this so that we can actually send it over so it's uh, 4850 and now we'll calculate Alice's uh, value so Alice is also two eight seven nine to the power of nine for Alice. And then again we take mod nine nine two nine. Okay, so that's uh, Alice's volume. Uh, so that's Alice. And that's Bob. Okay, so Bob's going to send this over to Alice. So the value that Alice will calculate will be four five eight five zero to the power of Alice's value, which is nine. And then we do mod nine nine two nine and we get four eight six eight okay so Alice sends over to Bob three six one four three six sorry, three six one four to the power of Bob's value which is six and then mod nine nine two nine haha <laughs> there we go perfect uh, so Bob calculates that value and they're the same okay so that that works and uh, so hopefully you should answer yes to that one okay so if you're working in a team then what to do is to generate your own random number uh, agree G and N and then pass the value that you calculate to the other person they should then pass their value to you and hopefully you'll come up with the same value even though you haven't known what uh, the the X and the, the Y values actually are okay so the next part of the lab all those will download this uh, open SSL so here we are here and uh, Probably depends what you're using. So if we just extract that, I would normally just extract it to the C drive, like that. Okay, I've already got that in there, so I just cancel. But uh, should all be there. Okay, and then I would just open up here, bring up a command prompt or CMD, CD slash, and then open SSL and there is our files there okay so we'll be using open ssl uh, let's see if i can get you a better font so you can see it mm. okay probably better with the first one that's fine okay so this is open ssl as we'll see later on it caused great problems it caused a heart bleed uh, a lot of the code has been written over many years, it was a bit sloppy and so on, but it's still very good for our cryptography. So you can either just press return and then you can look at your commands in here, or you can just type in the command, uh, and one of them is the cipher, cipher commands. And that's all the ciphers that we've got. So we've got uh, Blowfish, EES, cast, des, 3 des, idea, 
RC2 and RC4. So we can use all these different methods. There's code CBC, the cipher block, and uh, there's a electronic code book, actually. Interesting. And, and so on. So there's lots of different methods that we can actually apply. It's really important that we know what version that we're actually using because earlier versions, such as this one, uh, have got Heartbleed. Uh, but we can actually have a look at that. So let's have a look at... Uh, so one of the options is uh, is Prime. So we can see there, there's, there's uh, Prime. Prime gives us the... Um, get some some options there. So if we want to look at a prime number 111 it tells us that's not prime uh, and we can try 42 it's not prime of course because it's even and then that one which is correct okay so we've also got a prime number checker on the uh, security site if you want to have a look and I'll test some big values for you just to see if they if they work and we'll just try that one one four two one and it's not prime okay so so that that allows the check for that so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use EES encryption and we're going to encrypt uh, our some text a file Okay, so we'll just put in open SSL encryption and then minus AES uh, ACS 256 using CBC. First thing we do is to create our file and I'll just put that in there. Okay, so we'll just do that and then we'll run our encryption. And it's AES two five six CBC minus the inf input file is there, and then the output file we'll call encrypted dot bin. Okay, let's get the command right. Okay, and I'm just going to put Napier, Napier, and that's it. So if we actually have a look at our file that we've just created. looks a bit like that, kind of gobbled the gook, strange characters, that's because it's in binary. Uh, it's very difficult for us to distribute that, so what we often do is to convert it into good old base64. Let's try that again. And that's it. Okay, so now when we look at it, it looks much more easy to, to handle, it's like a cipher string uh, and uh, there's a new line after it there, just remember that one so this is our, our file that we've actually created and it's easy for us to, to send that as an email or a text message and so on ok, so that's what that does now what we'll do is that uh, we'll now decrypt it just to see that we can get the plain text back again. Okay, so let's uh, use the minus D option. By default, we encrypt with minus D. We have that. So this is becomes our input file. And then we'll just use our password. And we we'll use Napier. Okay, so it's a base64. So with cryptography, we get typically an exception if it's if it's if it's the wrong format that we're actually using. Okay, so just make sure that you've got the right options in there. So we can see there that uh, we've managed to decrypt that, and everything is fine. So that 64 is from from the previous line, uh, but it's managed to decrypt our, our message. OK, so we can then go ahead and we can do the same for Blowfish, 3Des and RT2. And all you really need to do is to change the algorithm that you use there. Have a look at the name of the cipher that we're going to use. 
and then you should be able to, to encrypt and decrypt. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, generate a key pair that we're going to use. Just get rid of that one. Okay, so just over here. And uh, so we're just going to generate our RSE keys. Can take can take a while on some machines. Shouldn't take too long. It's only 1,024 bits. There we go. So it's generated that, and that's created our private key with a with our public key associated with it. Okay. So that's what our key looks like. We get the beginning and the, the end there, and those are important for importing our, our keys. Uh, we can actually have a look at what our key looks like, what the parameters are. If we just look as text, there we go. So the we view it in hexadecimal format. There's the prime numbers used and the exponents and the moduluses. That's what a our key looks like as part of that. We can encrypt it if we want in the three des, but we'll just jump over that just now. And then the next thing that we need to do is to be able to export our public key so that uh, someone else can encrypt the data for us. So then we go for the open SSL RSA and the input is our is our private key. Sorry about that. Our output Is our public key public sorry public dot pm and the output format is a pm format and we're going to export that okay so that's fine so we've got our public key key name so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, encrypt some data. Okay, so let's encrypt our in key is our public key that we just created. And our input file is my text, my file text, and our output file is file dot bin. Oops. So let's just check that we have uh, that in the right format. So it's encrypt in key public in minus file at file and uh, let's just see what the error is. I doesn't like the uh, that one because I've missed off. Say A T A T L. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so we now have our encrypted file uh, with uh, from the public key. So what we need to do now is to decrypt it with the private key. So decrypt. This time we're using the private key. And our input file is what we be just encrypted. And the output file is just going to be lost the cursor. <laughs> so it's file. So our input file is file.bin. And the output file is decrypt.txt. There you go. So we just check that that's what was in that file. And it is. Okay. So that's what fine. So what we did there is that we encrypted with, we created our key pair, we extracted our public key, we encrypted with the public key, and then we went back and decrypted with the private key and, and it all works very well. 
Okay, so we'll be going into uh, certificates in a bit more detail in the next presentation, but for just now we'll just have a quick look at how we can actually create a very basic certificate. Okay, so this is the thing that we're going to sign our keys. We create our certificate. And just let me check. So we have a new uh, private and just missed the output. Okay, we'll just go for UK and we'll load in uh, Edinburgh and APR uh, comp Fred. Fred. Okay, let's call it APR, APR, and so on. So that should have created a CSR file. We can then convert that into the X500 format to make it easier to port. So we need to sign it. Sign key private. Output server.crt. There we go. So we can just have a quick look at that. And there we go. Okay, issue to Fred. And we can look at some of the details. There's our key. There's our key then that we created. That's when it was created by and when it's how long it's valid. So we'll have a look in more detail. But that that's what's called the self signed certificate. It's not really worth very much. Okay, so if we go back to our test, then we've also got another couple of little challenges for you uh, as part of this lab. So here's one here. So if you just uh, create test.txt put one new line in and you should be fine. Okay, so what we want to be able to do is to be able to crack that either through AES or 3DES and with one of those passwords. So we want to go back to our decrypt if we can find it. There we go. So we'll just give it a quick try. And I think I call that uh, test on text. So try Napier. It doesn't work. One, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't work. And password. Okay, so, so just try out the, the different algorithms and see if you can get them to to work. I think it's DES3 is the option there. Okay, so, so, so just give that a try and see if you can actually uh, decrypt the ciphertext. Okay, so that's the that's really the end of the lab.